Postman Pat Bedtime Stories. Pat Goes Hiking. Every Saturday and Sunday and at holiday times, the hikers came to Greendale. They brought their rucksacks on their backs filled with sandwiches and raincoats and flasks of tea. They wore shorts and anoraks and thick woolly scarves and hats. Some even brought tents and stayed for a week or more. They walked all along the valley, had picnics by the lake and climbed over the hills and mountains. Can we go hiking? said Julian one day. It looks fun. We'll go on Sunday, said Pat. After church. Ted has plenty of rucksacks. He can lend us one or two. You'll need a map as well, said Ted when Pat asked him. A map, said Pat. I'll surely not need a map in Greendale. I know it like the back of my hand. It looks different when you're walking, said Ted. You'd better take one just in case. We don't want you getting lost. Here we are. This is a good one. Ted unfolded a large map. It was covered with squiggly lines, showing the hills, the lakes, the roads, and the winding footpaths of Greendale. It doesn't look a bit like Greendale, said Pat. It's all there, said Ted. Every nook and cranny. Well, I'll take it if you think I should, said Pat. Thanks very much, Ted. Cheerio. Have a good hike, said Ted. It was a fine Sunday morning, and Pat and Sarah and Julian got up early to make sandwiches and hot drinks. They went to the special family service at church at nine o'clock. So they were ready to set out in good time. As soon as they had changed into their old clothes, they were off. Look, said Pat, with a map spread out on his knees. There's a nice path through Greendale Forest. Then we could go along by the lake, across Major Forbes Meadow, over the top of Greendale Hill, and back along by the canal. Ace, said Julian. How far will that be? said Sarah. Oh, it doesn't look too far, said Pat. We have plenty of time. We have all day. It was lovely walking through the woods. Julian brought his bird book. He spotted a pair of jays deep in the wood and saw a buzzard hovering high in the sky looking for a mouse for dinner. Then they came out by the lake and saw the fish jumping for flies. They sat by the water to have a rest. This is the life, said Pat. What's that noise? said Sarah. I can't hear anything, said Pat. I can, said Julian. Sounds like Grandad snoring. I know what that is, said Sarah. It's Major Forbes' bull. That's what it is. We'd better move. That blessed bull, said Pat. He must have moved it from the bottom meadow. Look, there it is behind that tree. Run! Really, the bull was taking no notice of them. It was just making a noise for the fun of it. This was its way of saying what a nice morning it was. But they didn't stay to see. They ran across the meadow and through a stream and got their feet soaking wet. They didn't stop until they were through the gate. When Pat looked back, the bull was peacefully eating the grass. They crossed the river by the stepping stones, and Mrs. Goggins waved to them from her bedroom window. Julian found a fossil among the stones at the edge of the water, and the skull of a fox in the deep grass. Then they went over Thwaites Bridge and up to Greendale Farm. Mr. and Mrs. Pottage said, You must come in for a cup of tea. Katie and Tom gave Julian a ride on their swing. It hung from a tree, and you could swing right out over the pond and make the ducks quack in alarm. <laughs> we'll have to be getting on, said Pat. We're going up Greendale Hill. 
That's a good climb, said Mr. Pottage. Now just watch you don't get on the wrong path. There's a proper maze of paths up there. And there are the old mine shafts to look out for, said Mrs. Pottage. We don't want you falling down one of them. Can't you lend them your compass, Herbert? They shouldn't go without a compass. Herbert Pottage got his compass out of the drawer. He showed Pat how it worked, and Pat said, That's very kind of you, and thanks for the tea. We'd better be off now. All the Pottages waved them off, and Pat and Sarah and Julian were on their way. It was a long climb up the hillside above Greendale Farm. They were soon out of puff. The path wound in and out of the mounds and hillocks made by the rocks the miners dug out long ago. It was like a maze. Pat tried the compass, but its needle seemed to make no sense, and he couldn't remember what Mr. Pottage had said about it. Where is Greendale Hill now? said Sarah. It should be in front of us, said Pat. Oh, but there it is. It seems to have moved round to the right. It can't have moved, said Sarah. Hmm, no, it can't, said Pat. Now I wonder... Better have a look at the map, said Julian. Pat spread the map out on the ground. A quick wind came and rumpled it up. Sarah put a heavy stone on each corner to hold it down. Now let's see. We should be about there said Pat, putting his finger on the map. But we can't be if Greendale Hill is where it is, and the lake is over there, said Sarah, and it is. I think we're there, said Julian, pointing to quite a different place. No, we can't be, we must be there, said Sarah, pointing to yet another place. I know where we are, said Pat. Where, said Sarah and Julian. We are lost, said Pat. I thought you told Ted that you know Greendale like the back of your hand, said Sarah. I do, said Pat, when I'm on the road, but it's not the same when you're walking. It gets all muddled up. Well, what are we going to do, said Sarah. Well, we can see Greendale Hill, said Pat. Why don't we just make straight for it and never mind about the paths? So they turned to face the dark hill, and walked the way it led them. Up and over the bumps and hillocks they went, through muddy and wet patches, over rocks that hurt their feet, down into holes and gullies where they couldn't see ahead, and often came out facing the wrong way. Round prickly bushes and deep pools, splashing through streams. It took a long time to go a short way and they were soon very tired. Greendale Hill seemed no nearer. They saw one of the mine shafts. It was a square black hole in the grass. Pat threw a pebble down. They could hear it going bounce, bounce, down and down, hitting against the sides for a long time before there was a splash at the bottom. I don't like this, said Julian. That was a long way down, and we could have fallen down it, easy as easy. I hate it, said Sarah. So do I, said Pat. It was much better on the path. I can see a chimney pot, said Sarah. 